the thing about Skype is you have to uh, you have to start recording after you start the call. Mm -hmm. So and and usually the format of intervention live is I start alone and you're supposed to pop in unexpectedly. So will you do me the favor at the beginning here and will you pop in unexpectedly here? Just kind sure. of come into frame. Okay. Sure. So I'll All leave right. the meeting and then I'll come in. Okay. Great. Great. All right. So I'm just, you know, chilling here and anything get what? Mike Clapoff's here. Hey. <laughs> hey. I just right. came. I don't know. I was actually. So what I'll do sometimes mm -hmm. is I'll troll Skype. And I'll try to, like, hack into people's private conversations. I usually don't show my face, though, because they're not supposed <laughs> to know I'm there. But mm -hmm. I saw that you were recording some information that you were going to post about the movie. Yep. And I was like, I'm going to pop in here. I'm actually yep. going to show up and do See, my own thing. Anything and, can happen. And the thing is, like, anything. we're we're live in the sense that we are alive right now. So we, we are. Intervention live, so yes, yes, da, there da, you go. Da, 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 Intervention da. live. I was um, kind of like going back and forth between trolling Skype, and I'm also watching uh, My Best Fiend, which oh. is the Klaus Kinski Werner Herzog. I figured it was fitting considering that Klaus Kinski that's basically how I am on every movie set. <laughs> Is Klaus Kinski now describe Klaus Kinski on a movie set for me? Like do an impression? Uh, just like his behavior. Do you just describe his behavior. How He's, are you like him? Okay. Well, you know, first of all, totally not an agreeable person to work with at all. Very <laughs> hard to work with. <laughs> I am. I have a Jesus complex. And I am not afraid to show it to other people. I have no respect for the filmmaking process. I don't like directors, but for some reason they keep hiring me. Um, I've done over two, three movies, and I keep getting hired. <laughs> no, I'm nothing like Klaus Kinski. I hope if one day that's not if so if one day somebody's just like. You're like Klaus Kinski again. I'm like, in what way? If they don't say, like, you're captivating on screen, if they're just like, you know, your behavior, something's wrong. I need to fix something. <laughs> That's the first person they, they think of, too, is Klaus. Oh, you're just like that Klaus Kinski guy. Everyone in my own mind, everyone exists in Mike's universe where, there, where it's just deep cuts all <laughs> over the place. Just <laughs> random <laughs> references. Mm -hmm. And and everyone knows who Klaus Kinski is, and mm -hmm. just you know that's the kind of world I want to live in. He's basically Ryan Seacrest. He's everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> that's a terrifying world. It's now I'm picturing Klaus <laughs> Kinski hosting American Idol and like his own radio show with celebrities. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That'd be that's wild. I was waiting for one of us to do the rendition, but I don't know if that's going to happen. Uh, it's it's a it's it's too dystopian to even think about it. <laughs> so let's talk about the movie, an yeah. intervention. Mm -hmm. You play Liam Crab. Liam, Liam Crab. His and middle. I, did we ever reveal his middle name? You know what I. I don't think I wrote that in your bio. So I you came up with one. What is it? Soft shell. <laughs> <laughs> you walked right into that one. <laughs> Look at here. I promise that I'll dispense with the dad jokes. That's Liam the only... soft shell. <laughs> How about Liam Jumbo Lump is your middle Jumbo. name? Jumbo. Yeah. Yeah. Crab's actually his middle name. His mm. last name is Shaq. Oh, great, great, <laughs> great. Um, I better not do that. I am not. No, uh-uh. Uh, so, Leah, yeah, Leah, here's what I realized about your character, Liam Crab, mm -hmm. is that I, I stole the last name from from the uh, character in uh, A Mighty Wind, played by... Uh, yeah. That's the British guy's name. I forget. Uh, uh, 
What I realized is the guy, the British guy in A Mighty Wind, it has the same last name. And I totally subcon you know how writers they do this all the time. They subconsciously steal stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh that's totally what happened because this is a Christopher Guestian movie, and yes. I was in 2012 in my research working up to this movie because we shot it in 2013. I must have absorbed that, and uh, I want to acknowledge it now that that's uh, yeah. because he has a crab town, right? He has and, a crab town, and he does he sell adult diapers like he markets them. He He's like, like recycled. The, the thing ones. about incontinence is you can have, you know, constipation, impacted fecal matter pushing <laughs> up against the bladder. Yeah, they were like having that conversation while they're eating, and oh god, yeah, um, yeah. So let me, I'll say that. I'll say that first. That uh, Liam Crab, you know. But uh, I want to ask you two questions. One is, what was your favorite part of playing Liam Crab, and what's mm -hmm. your, what was your least favorite if you have one? I'm going to go least favorite first. Um, honestly, like, my least favorite was... I, I wish, like, I could... Honestly, I wish, like, I could have done more with the character. Because the thing was, I kind of... That character just popped out. Like, I even walked up to the door ready to shoot. Not quite knowing where the character was going to go. Because I found, for me, when I'm improvising, if I go in with too strong of a headspace of where I want things to go, even if it's just a character, I'm the, it's, it's too limiting. I don't like that. It, it, so I didn't go into this movie thinking like, I'm going to be a dick. It just <laughs> happened because, uh, but, but anyway, I wish I could have done, I wish, I think it was like the single day shoot aside from the pickup interview that we did on uh, my parents' basement after the fact but mm. i i think there's there was still meat on that bone that i wish i could have chewed into <laughs> you got the stew going um <laughs> I, um so that's probably my least favorite part was just how quick it went by mm -hmm. honestly mm. um it was you know one day and it was gone and like that's but, but in a way it was cool because rewatching it was like a whole new experience i didn't remember much of anything i remembered a few select moments but a lot of it just was brand new to me all over again my favorite part of playing um liam crap it, 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 the the freedom of being able because the thing was and i really respect that, that you did you cast me i think in that part because i i, I don't want to put words in your mouth but i no. think it was because i kind of knew the rules of the road in terms of how recovery works and what ended up happening was i think because i came in with that mindset of like you know i'm the only one on set that may have had firsthand experience with this Mm -hmm. I was, I just started to come out. I think it was that first conversation with Chelsea and Greg at the table where I just started thinking to myself, like, I'm the only person on set that really knows how this game is played. What if I turn that into like, and almost not, not an abuse of power, but an abuse of knowledge, like, <laughs> <laughs> I hold myself in higher regard because, like, I'm the only one here that knows anything about this. So, mm -hmm. like, you know, that and that that's kind of where I was able to play with it. Yeah. But I think because I was able to be play the mediator in the movie, it allowed me that freedom to have those moments of just like trying to maintain control in an uncontrollable situation. And to be quite fair, one of the re reasons I think that the whole situation is uncontrollable is because Liam himself is out of control. He's in a <laughs> headspace that he should not be doing this. He needs to be on a leave from work. He should not be in a position right now to be helping people. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, it was funny. It's almost like you know when you're when you're in a position of a counselor or an interventionist, you're supposed to use your knowledge to help, not mm -hmm. to hurt. And, and and he's just wielding it like a knife, just oh, like I'm smarter than all of you, you know. And it was <laughs> it was fun to uh, to play that role. Mm -hmm. That was a really long answer to a short question. No, no, I'm glad. I'm glad you said all that. Um, 
because I was going to, the next question was going to be, be basically, what did you bring to the role? You know? Um, so what are, what I'm mm -hmm. guessing our viewers, m many of our viewers don't know. Some of them, you know, I think that the people, some of the people, a select few involved with the movie know this. I don't know how many people day of shooting knew. I knew that you and Jer knew. I'm pretty sure that, um, um, Kate, who plays Caitlin, who plays Chelsea, knew at the time. I don't know who else knew, but I actually, at the time of shooting, I was one, yeah, one year, eight months. Um, no, 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 it was one year, five months sober, actually, at that point. And I had just come off of a whole series of benders and relapses years and years dui rehabs homelessness hospitalization um so i think again like pointing out i think that the reason you brought me in there was to kind of because you you had you would have someone on set who kind of knew how this worked and as as an actor what i did was i took that knowledge and instead of being like, okay, I know how this works, I, I more so use the knowledge of like, this is how you don't do things. Yeah. And so um, it was a great source of knowledge and conflict for the movie, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, because you're right, absolutely nobody on the set knew, including me. I didn't mm -hmm. do much research. Of course, I, in my peripheral, I had known a have relationship with alcoholics. I know the behavior of alcoholics. I've, right. I've been to an intervention in real life. Yeah. Um, however, I, d I don't know the the ins and the outs, so I needed that perspective, but also your skill set as an improviser. So to to blend those two together was just perfect, you know. Yeah. Thank yeah. you very much for saying yeah. that. I um, I um, it, it it was so those wounds were still so fresh for me that there were moments where I was actually genuinely passionate about what I was talking about. Like if you watch that moment where K Paul is saying he wants to sponsor him and I've read the manual. Yeah. It, I, so I used that fuel as like a diminishment of like, you have no idea what this entails. It's not a fucking manual. Like, first yeah. of all, the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous is like that thick. Like, there's a lot going on. It's not a fucking manual. <laughs> and he's like, and then he's like, what did he say? He's also like, I can Google any questions you have. And I'm like, if it was that easy, no one would need a sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> was, but, um, you know, I used that as, like, fuel to get genuinely frustrated. It was great. Like, the way that people were feeding off of each other that day. You seriously captured some lightning in a bottle, dude. I don't know if that could happen twice. <laughs> like it just went. Let me put it this way: like it went way smoother than it could have, and it went way smoother than I think it ever would again in that format. That one day, well, primarily one day shoot straight through real time. That was mm -hmm. impressive to say the least. And you were you you were great because I remember one thing about you from that day and i will say i love working with you because you strike a really good in my humble opinion a really good balance of professionalism but also you know a lot most of if not all of the people that you work with i think you know you know on a personal level as far as as well as working now, now, i don't know if it, it, was there anybody there who you didn't know prior who was just cast off the cuff um, I didn't really work with, uh, Brian and Katie before, mm -hmm. uh, they, we were just starting to work together in theater. So that was kind of a, I don't, Brian I was, was an, I hate theater, wasn't he? He was. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so he was, he did do that. Yeah, that's true. Um, I totally forgot about his experience on that, our experience on that. Actually, because it was just it was we shot it like the intervention like a month or two after we did uh, that movie, mm -hmm. very close. So yeah, I blanked on that. Um, That's cool. Ryan, of course. Uh, Ryan. Ryan <laughs> he wound up doing, uh, or no, he did three. I believe he did three guys, one room before he did the movie. So no, everybody yeah. kind of had like a little yeah. 
a sort of well, that's what I'm saying is even yeah. when I come to set, like in the new your new movie, um, mm-hmm. what the day I came to set. There's just such a good balance working with you of, you know, you know, we know each other. Mm-hmm. We, we, we goof, or, you know, we hang out casually and stuff. But when I get there, it's such a good balance of like, you know, palling around, but also professionalism. Like mm-hmm. you, you have, because if it's me, if I'm left to my own devices, nothing would get done. Because I'm, <laughs> I, I, I'm, ta- I'm tangent city, and I'll just be like, "Hey guys, remember when you know, like, and I'll just things will go <laughs> off the rails, and they'll go off the rails I, fast." But I, you I have absolutely. a really great focus, I think, and vision, and like, okay, we're gonna get this done. We're gonna do this now and this, and it's gr- great because it helps someone like me stay on track. <laughs> I was gonna say I, I have to uh, put on my my ad my assistant director hat because mm-hmm. we don't have a big crew. It it is literally me. It is Kevin and it is Pat for sound. So two cameras, sound guy. We don't have so I have to be the ad. I also have to be the producer who and the line producer and you know and all that stuff. So, uh, so thank you for saying all that mm-hmm. and I appreciate it, man. Yeah, uh, absolutely. It's, it's, I love I, working with is, I love working with you. That's why I would yeah. never turn. If you asked me to like, mm-hmm. can you play a tree in my new movie? I'd be like, yeah, dude. <laughs> hand me a couple branches. I'll stand there with my arms out for a while. <laughs> I think you would probably any role, even a tree, would would be uh, phenomenal. In I think you're. Oh, uh, thanks. I've buddy. said that before, and I don't want to. I'm not gonna wax your car too much but i think you're one of the best actors i know personally and i'm anytime oh, i get to work you, with you as a treat so thank you yeah i told you two coats of wax in my car not just one sorry that came to mind i, had to say oh, I love it I can love i it. vape during our thing no ab- no, no you can absolutely um yeah i guess um my next question would be <laughs> sorry, that, that, that covered the whole thing i didn't need for it I, I I got the cloud in my face here on this <laughs> side. Um, you to to flip it. You didn't really know the cast very well going in. So what was that like? Like I don't. Did you even so much as uh, you weren't there for the rehearsals that we had, and we're sharing mm-hmm. some of that footage now on like mm-hmm. YouTube and the Instagram. But um, did you? And, yeah, because that was at that time. I don't think I had. I I didn't even have. I don't think I had my driver's license back yet at that mm. point. So I didn't even have a car and I certainly wasn't driving. And I think that's why I wasn't there for that because mm. you drove me to set that day, the day that uh, we shot, you picked sure. me up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause I was, I'm telling you, I was coming off of some bad stuff. I had pieces to put back together. You know, I don't, is is and you know, I, it's like, I think to me, the best thing I could do as a friend is, not like keep you busy, but like get you engaged in positive mm-hmm. things, you know, no, I things needed that it. You're, you're good at things that yeah. you're great at. Yeah, I so, needed it 100 yeah. percent. And I remember that day specifically because when I got in your car, mm-hmm. I was quoting Silver Linings playbook, but you didn't know. I said, yeah. hey, can we go to the public library? And you had a look on your face like, is this what? kidding? Yeah, and then I said, I want to read Nikki's entire high school syllabus. <laughs> and that I think because. I think any day that anyone, not just you, but any director, shooting day is it's heavy mentally. I think oh, yeah. you know, you got, I think that helped you to kind of be like, this will be fun, <laughs> you know? Like, yeah, it's, yeah. It's I don't always get a mic on the set, you know. Sometimes it is it's tense to be to be frank and, and really, yeah, like. I wouldn't say between me and the actors. It's just me. I'm tense from the whole situation because you have to be professional. You have to answer all the questions that are going to be hurled at you. Otherwise, who are you? You're not the director. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, you you have to maintain relationships with these people. But, you know, when you're not shooting a film, hopefully, and you don't want them to fucking hate you. So they're they're doing you a favor. uh, and, And I'm doing them maybe this tiny much of a favor is the, the way I see it, if anything. So mm-hmm. um, you can't fuck that up. So mm, yeah. I, I do, that's why I want to create a fun in, environment on the set as well. I try to, you know? Yeah, absolutely. But, uh, but you're right. I didn't know. I knew you. I knew Jer. Mm-hmm. I kind of knew Caitlin. Mm-hmm. Kind of. We had worked together. In on the last movie before that. Yeah. Yeah. In... Mm-hmm. 
pre-production and during the shoot. But I didn't know Katie at all yeah. uh, at the time. I barely knew Brian. I never met Ryan, I don't think. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I didn't know Phil. Did that but, help? Hmm? Did that help? Did that help? It didn't hurt at <laughs> all. Um, I mean, I if I'm going in as that character, I wouldn't know them ahead of time anyway. So and they wouldn't know me. So it, I think it did help quite a bit. I didn't know Kara. So, yeah, I mean, I really was going in fresh. I was scared, though, because I didn't know any of these people. And I was like, you know, are they... <sighs> Is it, I'm always scared. I, I'm I'm a typical actor. I I'm very insecure. I'm like, are these people gonna like me? Like I get I get I do, and I get really like I want to please people all the time. So I want to be. You know, I, I just did like a crazy look. Like, I just want to be your friend. <laughs> okay. um, but no, it's uh, I so it was kind of scary. But that, you know, that's just fuel for the performance. You know, that's mm -hmm. just. And I think I think that the fact that the first thing we shot was with Chelsea and Greg or Caitlin and Jeremy. It started, it built, it built. It started with yeah. Jer and Kate. And then you came along and we got to spend a good hour with you. And then Katie. That and helped me because I knew them. So yeah. it was like, it helped my nerves, I should say. Because mm -hmm. I was like, okay. I could do this. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm right now riffing with people I know. If I can riff with them, I can riff with, you and know, anybody. So the stuff we got at the kitchen table, uh, it's not about you. It's not about you. It's kind of about me. Uh, <laughs> just like nuggets like that throughout that scene in particular. <laughs> that scene is a, is a real mine of gold there. Uh, there. Wasn't there a whole running gag during that scene? about mm. like a dumpster behind Hardee's or something that yeah the that was a little wacky but i we think... even we shot an insert too we went to a <laughs> we dumpster behind a Hardee's. so what was the context do you remember it was like that was my that was like in my opinions as a counselor <laughs> in my experience that was the worst possible outcome that that's was... rock bottom that's where you're going to end up in a dumpster <laughs> behind Hardee's, which is an oddly specific thing. Very. To, and then we did a, we did a, a cutaway. I think we recorded of me. Let me see if I can pull my camera back far enough of me, like opening up a dumpster and then like, <laughs> like something, something like that. I, I I'll, I'll find it. I have it. I yeah. have it. Yeah, I'll share it. I share everything. I have been so. But uh, and I also remember that I think that was I, the closest I came to laughing during because I did. I was holding. I was like, "You're gonna wind up in a dumpster behind our It's like I turned into Mad Foley because I was trying not to laugh. <laughs> there is um, a, there was one part where you broke, and I can't. I, le I almost left it in the movie because it almost looked like your character was like you're in character kind of laughing at Greg at the table. I'll have to uh, find that too. Okay. I don't want to be a tease, but um, uh, go, uh, let me rewind because you, you inspire <laughs> a tease. Let me rewind and ask you this. How much of Liam is of that performance is fear based? How much of it is anger based? One of those two. It's frustration based a lot of it because mm. I just used the frustration of being an addict and alcoholic in a world where a lot of people don't understand what you're going through. So I flipped that in terms mm -hmm. of being the expert on it, dealing with a world where people don't understand the rules. So I took my own frustration and just recontextualized it mm -hmm. and tried to make it where. I took the fact because at the, 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 the recovery is life and death. I'm not going to speak for other addicts and alcoholics. I'm not going to do that. For me, it's life or death. If I relapse, I'm not going to let be around much longer. So I take it very seriously. And I think the fact that these characters 
that I'm with are trivializing it helped fuel that frustration and anger. Like you have no idea how real this shit is. This is not a joke and you can't read a manual. You can't join the Republican party and all of a sudden you're sober like this. I got, so that frustration was, that was good. That was good. Um, just a good point to push off of is the fact that it was such a, it was such a close and personal thing for me, the whole topic. You, you, um, without your character, there would not be, it would feel like we're making, my question is, do you feel like we, we were sincere enough and delicate enough in such a uh, sensitive subject? And, and I think, and I'll just say without mm -hmm. you, I don't think we would have achieved such a level that I think we achieved a sensitivity of the subject because of your understanding, because of your knowledge of it. And us, we have just, who are we? You know, we're just a bunch of psych. We treat this like it's nothing, but it's serious. You know, yeah. that's the character's problem. So, yeah, it is. And, um, no, I think, I think that the balance struck was perfect. And Good. I also think that it's the kind of thing that, I think this movie, I think that every alcoholic and addict should see this movie because I think that the light that it puts on it's okay to laugh about even the dark stuff in your life and it's mm -hmm. okay to kind of shine a funny light on it. I think that's important for anything that people are going through. I think parody and satire is incredibly important no matter how dire the subject matter is. Um, so no, no, I think it was handled perfectly, especially, especially the finished product. There were some things that I remember thinking like, this is a little over the top, but the way that they were trimmed down and put together by the end, just, it yeah. worked. It worked real well. No, I think that the subject matter is handled incredibly respectfully because at the end of the day, I mean, whether you're an addict or an alcoholic or somebody who's trying to help someone. I mean, we're all just trying to figure this this shit out anyway, man. I mean, so it's kind of one of those things where you got a group of strangers just trying to fumble through solving a problem together. Mm -hmm. And it gets it gets solved against all logic. It somehow gets <laughs> solved. They figure it out somehow. And yeah. they shouldn't have been able to pull together and do it, but they did. No, I think it's actually handled very respectfully in that sense. Trust me, if you've ever been to a rehab, much more ridiculous conversations have taken place and much mm. more ridiculous arguments have taken place. So no, it's uh no, it's it's great. It I like I said, I think this could be this should be something that they show to patients in rehab because there's a lot of real there's there's things there to discuss. I mean, yes, it's very funny, but it's there's some important things there that need to get pulled from it. Oh, that's uh, that means a lot. And uh, I'm glad mm -hmm. that's uh, that's what we achieved. So very good. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm going to ask you one more question and mm -hmm. then we can peace out. Uh, there's been some talk mostly by you and me about, <laughs> and this was a while back about a Liam centric spinoff sequel. Yeah. Uh, the working in the rehabilitation clinic. Yeah. Yeah. And losing public funding for one reason or another. So needing, what was it? He was going to like put together like a, ta a rehab talent show or something to raise that is, to uh, keep it open. Was that your right? That must have been your I idea. I think that, that was, was yeah. my idea. That's great. That is lovely. <laughs> I love it. So you'd have like a good cast of like patients and stuff together. Dude, and... dude we should make it. I like, would do it. Well, fuck. Like <laughs> people keep asking you to do movies because you keep pitching them good movies. <laughs> the what what would it be called? Um I don't know, something like um I don't know. I'm tr I'm trying to think of a good alliteration that has to do with alcoholism or drug addiction mm. for follies, like <laughs> something follies. Right, right, right. You're trying to think of some f alcohol centric yeah. word. Yeah. Uh, I I can't help you there without Google. Uh oh. Wait, wait, wait. What what else could it be? Blackout bonanza. 
a night wolf <laughs> talent <laughs> or something. There you go. There you go. And it's, you know, it's a guy like singing like in front of a crowd like the the poster would be a guy singing in front of a crowd but instead of a microphone it's like a bottle of beer he's holding <laughs> like music notes coming out a really distasteful like you, you had you had me until the poster no, maybe pr no, don't do the post marketing is not your strong suit but uh <laughs> No, no, marketing, because that's, yeah, that's, but you no, know, that would be fun, actually. I would do it. Dude, I'd reprise that character. Some people might hold us to it, like, not myself, not you. So, like, if they do, we kind of have to put our money where our mouths mm -hmm. are and, uh, and make it. So, mm -hmm. all right, I'm putting it out there. This is, uh, this is huge. This is hot. Um, are you going to be at the watch party this Friday? Absolutely. Great. Great. It's at 8 o'clock, right? Yep, 8 central on the 22nd. I, I still got to join the Discord. I haven't joined the Discord yet, but I'm going to do that. We just started Discord. Yeah, you guys could find it on uh, our Twitter, on our Facebook, uh, on our Instagram. Well, we haven't quite advertised it on the Instagram, but uh, those places. And uh, join us on Friday, the 22nd. You can join me. You can join Mike. You can join Jeremy M. Eden. You can join Caitlin Eden. You can join Phil Platakis, uh, Fire Tank Frank himself, Kevin Kirchman, the DP. Uh, I believe Patrick. Even, I believe, Excess from the movie. Uh, oh, I saw <laughs> that email. I was like, Excess is going to be there? Excess is going to be. You guys have to come. Uh, I'm, Katie's going to be there. It's going to be great. Um, Amazon Prime as well as our Discord. You can do both, but you, sh you have to do Amazon Prime. Uh, and you have to be a member. You have to rent or purchase the movie. Uh, we will share the link on all social media the day of. Just look around. You will find it. Uh, Mike, thank you so much for being on. Hey, no problem. So so I'll let you get back to whatever it was you were doing. I just popped into. Yeah. Like, hey. Yeah, I mean, um, I was just kind of a, you know. I kind of lost my train of thought, to be honest with you, but like, I'm glad you popped in because <laughs> in this show, this is the show that's not live tonight, but it's a show where anything can happen. So anything, anything. And I like anything. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I got to go, Mike. I'll see you later. <laughs> All right, buddy. I'll see you. Take care, man. All right, bud. Bye bye.